Welcome, Achievers, to a kind of relaxing Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of May 23rd, <clears throat> 2024. I am, of course, with you today solo, as I just wanted to kind of sit down and just talk about the industry right now. No news, no specific topic. I, w- I always like kind of every now and then just sitting down and just discussing with you today. Uh, or I should say discussing every now and then, kind of sitting down, giving less direction for the show. I think it's a nice change of pace where we're not kind of just going through the motions together. We're not sitting down and just saying, hey, we're only going to be talking about these things today. This requires me to be more fluid, and I like that. I want your opinion as well, but this seems to always be liked by people listening to the show. But of course, if that changes, let me know. And as an open discussion kind of format today, or as a reminder, this is like a round table. So if you're listening and you hear something that you want me to expound on or uh, get more in depth with either in the show itself or in the comments or a tweet, then just let me know. You can, of course, tweet at me at EVM9000, EVM9000 over on Twitter. Or you can leave a comment below in any platform and I... Answer as many as I can. Uh, Pretty much 100% track record with every YouTube comment. So I will answer everything uh, as far as I'm able to. I want to thank everyone for coming today. And right now, for some reason, I do find myself wanting to talk about Game Pass and Xbox yet again. Because we seem to be nearing a precipice where we are kind of going towards an almost Event Horizon-like uh, situation with xbox where and maybe this has already happened and i am maybe just a bit late in my pontification here but it seems like we're getting so so close to microsoft xbox game pass kind of hitting something to where there is no going back and maybe one could argue we've already hit that i've actually said before of course there's been many times that i've thought about kind of things that have happened and there was no going back you of course can think of the first parties coming to game pass game pass existing period i don't think game pass coming was that big of a deal in and of itself but of course a few months later they then announce all first parties will be on game pass and when it makes you think in that sort of through line we have to fast forward from that point to now and we're seeing them kind of flounder a bit in uh, in the wake of, of course, Sony and Nintendo kind of just leaving them in the dust. They're making so much money off of selling their consoles, which then, of course, gets them the rip off of people buying things on the console. Uh, let's not forget you get that uh, 30% rip for doing nothing as long as you're just maintaining both the console ecosystem and the digital storefront that each one uh, kind of gives you with, of course, the Switch and PlayStation 5 and, of course, PS4 and All these other things do the same thing, but uh, and we're seeing them kind of diversify as well, and we're seeing Xbox just kind of flounder. And going into Game Pass, it seems like we are hitting something to where they have to make a decision, and it seems like they're still kind of deciding that. Uh, I think I saw the other day Call of Duty, of course, being still talked about coming to Game Pass, right? This was something that I didn't think was possible um, on the forefront, but now we see a world where they are trying to get their games out everywhere, you could maybe see where they actually kind of see where they kind of have to have it on Game Pass to maybe continue existing or at least continue existing with Game Pass, maybe continue existing as an Xbox. As we now know that uh, it is getting ever so close to Microsoft Gaming, maybe the only reason it is not changed drastically uh, is maybe Phil Spencer is maybe Matt Booty and Sarah Bond up there, the the major. And once they're gone, maybe there will be a giant kind of change in a uh, presentation, as it were, uh, when whenever they go. Who knows? We Those are such high level. We, we really will probably never know unless uh, a few select people uh, leak it at some point. But of course, Call of Duty uh, was um, pseudo announced, kind of. Um, it was uh, announced in a Twitter post. A dark new chapter of the Black Ops franchise begins. Call of Duty Black Ops Six, uh, and that will be. And it's a little emblem. It looks like Cerberus. You can go check this out, of course. And 
seeing this and we're hearing rumblings that they're still trying to decide if this should launch on Game Pass or not. And I have to say, we must, I say we, well, they must, because I'm not part of this, of course, uh, they must kind of keep going as they see fit, right? If we're going with the assumption that nothing is selling on Xbox, right? They have the data. They know how much Call of Duty sold on Xbox. They know to the uh, specific unit, right? Uh, do they forego all that money up front and just throw it on Game Pass? Or do they completely lock it out of Game Pass? Send a semi-confusing message because when you hear Activision was purchased by Microsoft, you assume a Call of Duty would come there from the average consumer. Now, as a reminder, in my stance on this prior to this, I did not think Call of Duty would ever come to Game Pass uh, for a couple of reasons. One, they needed to make money quickly off of Call of Duty, right? You don't make that money putting it on a subscription service. Uh, you you make it off the rips of what you're selling, and they would want all of that profit sold on their Xbox store uh, to be gotten as fast as possible. Now, maybe they think a hybrid approach will just w win, be a win-win. I am unsure of this because they really have all the data here. Uh, it's a win-win because they're able to sell it on PlayStation. That's where they're going to get the vast majority of their money, that... Uh, full giant 70% of that sale. I'm, I'm assuming there's some sort of unique situation there. Let's not forget Xbox was selling so few Call of Duty copies that the CEO back then of Activision, before the buyout, of course, um, Bobby Kotick, uh, pretty much threatened to not launch on Xbox if they did not get a better cut. Uh, they f they forced them into whatever better dealing it was. I don't think we had the specifics in the emails that were leaked. But they pretty much forced them into a position where they were uh, forced to take even less money from Activision uh, to even justify launching. He he pretty much specifically said he would not launch it. And I believe him. I don't think that was a bluff there. That's the Bobby Kodak himself saying that to one Phil Spencer, I believe. And uh, that is, uh, yeah, yeah, that that kind of shows you that that wasn't the cash cow. That wasn't what they cared about. Now, as a reminder, this is also going on Switch. Uh, Microsoft signed a 10 year deal to keep Call of Duty on Switch, I believe, and PlayStation uh, for 10 years. I think it was 10 years. I'm pretty sure it was maybe 15, but I'm pretty sure it was 10. Uh, so it's going to be everywhere. Now, I don't know how it will be on a Switch, but we'll see how that works out. But when we look at the horizon now for Xbox, I, I challenge anyone to not be, one, very curious. I think this is actually probably the most interesting in the actual gaming space right now. We don't have any major disruptions outside of this specific situation, right? If you're talking specifically about Nintendo, let's say you have a Nintendo podcast or you just say avid fan, what are you talking about? Weekly, right? Nintendo not really changing much else, and we're all kind of just waiting for Switch 2 to be announced and have a big Switch reveal, and then, of course, they'll then launch. But aside from that, not too big news coming from the Switch, right? right? And then PlayStation uh, is almost radio silent. No showcases. Um, it was big news today, just this small little thing that Neil Druckmann says, quote, uh, their next game could, quote, redefine mainstream perceptions of gaming, end quote. Uh, and he's kind of getting shit for this. I don't understand how you could doubt Neil Druckmann. I mean, he's back-to-back -back made two of the best games ever made, and uh, people are just acting like he's very pretentious. And maybe he does come across that, maybe to some people, but to me, I think he's just a good storyteller. But, you know, we, me and Emmett Watkins Jr., of course, on the last episode had a discussion about... Uh, him and why people dislike him. I understand maybe that you have maybe a, a big dislike of potentially what he stands for, but I don't know. But uh, I, I don't know. I don't really care about that specifically. But you guys do you, I guess. That's for a discussion for another day, I suppose. Um, but I mean, something just as small as that when they did the Sony uh, event. I f it's it's called the Sony what, uh, Sony Share event. What, what is this called? I f I I'm blanking on the the Sony Sony the Sony Group does something. They have, they host a little event and they talked a lot, very glowingly about PlayStation. Right. Th this is how desperate we are for PlayStation news. By the way, a Sony shares pretty much pretty much a thing for shareholders and all these things. 
uh, was an event. Uh, not much was talked about for what we care about, but uh, they talked about how you know how PlayStation is very successful, how the PlayStation Network is like top ten and uh, like engagement platforms, and they're going to be using it to extend it and blah blah. blah. You know, very very glowing. Um, I guess people might have expected showcase announcement and things. They did not know what this was if they thought uh, <laughs> that this was happening there. Um, but uh, yeah, that they had the little Sony group meeting and 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 they talked so little. Something like that is is news and and like you know and explodes throughout the internet for the day. And we look at Xbox and they they talk so much that you can you could pretty much make a news story about Xbox every week to every few 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 days maybe sets of five days you have a story about phil spencer said this in an interview sarah bond said this uh they're doing this to this game passes this yz we still don't know x y you know and that is one thing i bring up right what's one thing i challenge you to do that that is something that they are very interesting right now and i think they're actually the only inherently interesting situation currently because we o- we only have a lot of information from them because of how public they've had to be with the purchase of Activision, Blizzard, etc. And second, I challenge you to um, not be a little worried as well, right? How do you not be worried with what we're seeing here? With all the little things, with all the little missteps constantly, right? And it does seem like they're constantly on the back foot. Uh, we see Redfall release back foot. Uh, we see Game Pass uh, not really delivering. We see the Game Pass Studios not really delivering, right? We, we are constantly seeing a weakish year from them. Maybe now we're starting to see kind of a steady uh, outcome. Even Hellblade 2 that just released uh, yesterday or two days as of recording uh, is getting fine reviews. Just it's it's a fine game. It's only six to eight hours. Won't take you very long. New Game Plus is kind of fun if you want to do that. But not much else. Not very exciting. Nothing popping out at anyone. I know a lot of people call that the Xbox tax, whatever you'd like to say. I I imagine in in eight, probably pretty close to that. Uh, I believe the first one scored pretty much around the same thing. And I mean, I just actually played the first one for the first time a few days ago, and I have to agree. It's probably around the time where it was because it's not very deep, but visually and uh, storytelling wise, it is interesting. It just does give an air of that kind of pretentious arty game. I don't actually say that as a negative. I know pretentious does sound negative. I actually don't feel that way whenever I usually use the word. Um, I just use it as a term that we all kind of understand, right? It's pretentious, meaning it knows what it's doing. It knows it's being artful, right? Alan Wake 2, I think, is very pretentious. Uh, but it, but that's not necessarily a bad thing to me. I understand uh, a lot of people see that as a negative, but I, I just see it as they are self-aware that they are being over the top in their messaging, but in that in of itself, it's not a bad thing as long as they use that to then make something very compelling. I think Hellblade 1 actually did a very good job of that. It's just not a lot to do. Uh, you know, you use your eyes to look through these things and it's pretty simple and, and, you know, you're really only doing it for an audio experience. I actually saw uh, someone, I don't remember who it was, uh, I apologize, I think it was someone from Kind of Funny that said that this is kind of like an audio experience in a game, right? It's almost like this audio marvel, visual marvel inside of a game and that's probably closer to what I'm going to be expecting from the game. I'm not expecting very deep. That's not what uh, Ninja Theory makes. It's not what they made with Hellblade 1. That's not what's this going to, and it's probably not going to be Project Mar, whatever that is. It's probably going to be a pretty pretentious-ish art game, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. Uh, As long as they know what they're doing and they're self-aware, there are pretentious things that are not self-aware and think they are sort of grandstanding and being very... Uh, and they think being vague is interesting. I always bring up um, Rick Hogue. Uh, he's such an interesting guy. He does a, a kind of, um, how would I say what he does? He's like an entertainment lawyer kind of content. He he does, uh, he, he gives you ideas because he's a lawyer and he specializes actually in mergers and acquisitions. And he talks about it on his channel. Go check him out. Hogue Law. A very good channel. It's always interesting hearing him talk about these things because he actually knows he's talking about it, and, uh, me, where I'm just kind of guessing. 
a lot of the time, especially when we get into law. But when we, w- I saw him tweet out that, uh, and he um, kind of said something that resonated with me a little bit, but not quite. I actually disagree with him a, a lot, but it resonated a little bit where he's like, you know, just because uh, being being overly artful and pretentious, uh, you still need to deliver something. And I actually see that as a good point, right? He was speaking specifically on Hellblade 2. And you know what? Since I'm actually quoting this gentleman directly, Rick Hogue, um, I would like to actually bring him... Ex- ex- let's go look exactly what he said, just so I'm not being, you know, not trying to misquote anyone. So let's give me a second to bring him up. Richard Hogue on Twitter. Here he comes, Hogue Law. Scroll down a little bit to... Let's see. Yeah, yeah, so finally succeeds. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Hellblade 2. This is just a tweet. Hellblade 2, finally. Xbox succeeds in competing with Sony on its own ground. Pretension. And then he scored the game 4 out of 10. And that is his final score. Uh, Yeah, yeah. I, 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 And that's going to hit you differently. That's going to hit someone differently. That You know, that's a point of a review. You're hearing someone that you might disagree or agree with. And it's their point of view. And I think Hellblade 2 is actually a good example of them trying to find that PlayStation game and be more like PlayStation uh, in, in some aspects. They are kind of missing the third-person pretension game. Like, I love God of War Ragnarok. Is it a great action game? Of course it is. Is it a great, great visceral example of this kind of storied warrior going through his life, trying to find fatherhood, but... Uh, and, and trying not to go back to his ways and because his ways was destructive to everything and everyone around him, of course. But in that in it of itself is a very pretentious kind of example, right? In something that wouldn't necessarily need that, right? People don't usually, right? I would say probably 75% of people who buy God of War Ragnarok are not buying it to see Kratos interact with his son or... Uh, um, how he will deal with him uh, growing up. Uh, they probably are buying it so they can use the uh, the the blades of chaos and stab people in the head and rip them in half and et cetera, et cetera. And these are all vessels. But that does not eliminate the importance of these kind of more pretentious aspects that we find ourselves in this industry. And I think we're actually kind of in a beautiful space that this is kind of becoming more prevalent. Now let's bring up the definition of pretension because I do believe it is pretty negative. Let's see. Attempting to impress by affecting greater importance, talents, culture, et cetera, than is actually possessed. Now that sounds like a video game to me, right? It, it, we still literally call them video games, right? Game, something to play and have fun. That is the base example of a game, right? No one plays basketball because it has this deep story, right? You play it because it's a fun game and then, you know, you can get more uh, good at it and, and it, it can be fun in different ways. But it is still a video game and we've kind of and I said this for a while, I, I, we, we should probably call some video games not, we shouldn't call them probably video games. There are a bunch of games that aren't necessarily fun, right? There are a lot of games that, um, you know, very, there's a bunch of good examples, right? Uh, Journey's pretty close to what I would say about that. Um, a couple of examples, I mean, pretty much any... I mean, Last of Us isn't fun, but you could argue the shooting aspect is fun. Uh, to many people, because it is a very good shooter. It's a very good third-person sh- shooter that you can then interact with the world, I, I guess I should say. Um, people play Call of Duty because it's fun, right? So the, you get different aspects of a, you know, we still call them video games, right? Oh, uh, this is a good example. The Wit- uh, the Witness, I think is what it's called. Um, the, the puzzle game. The Witness. Yes, The Witness, 2016. Right. Many people played that because uh, it's you know deep. Uh, everyone's gone to the rapture. These are all little games that you, uh, they're games, but they're kind of like messages wrapped inside of this kind of interactive playground. We call them walking simulators for for a while. We still kind of do, of course, with the Walking Dead season one, two, three, four. You know, and they never fucking stopped until they had to. And when we find that kernel of 
art that we're slowly kind of getting more accustomed to, it feels like, in our industry. It's becoming maybe something that should be pushed more forward, but I do find some people kind of pushing back on it, right? What is it okay to be pretentious, right, in side of a game? I think so. It seems like we are in the right space for that. It seems like everyone's taking... Hmm. It seems like everyone's taking well with what they're working with, right? So let me give... A better example, right? And I don't know. Alan Wake 2, I was about to bring up, but that's not selling really well. So that's a bad example of this kind of pretentiousness that we find ourselves in. This kind of pretentious era almost, right? We kind of had the arcade boom, the Xbox Live arcade boom um, around the uh, Xbox 360 days. That kind of that kind of settled down to where it would just be kind of normal again. Uh, but yeah, I, I that's, I don't know. I'm finding myself talking myself into a corner with this specific example, right? I kind of found my way into discussing how pretension is actually maybe good for the industry, and yet I am finding ways of talking myself almost out of my exact argument that I think should be good. Is something that is... I mean, if we just look at PlayStation Studios, right? I mean, almost every game they've released has some sort of pretentious aspects to them. So there are something that is good, and maybe I am misrepresenting uh, pretension and should be using something else, you know, artful, you know, more positive uh, things to discuss on this. But I don't know. I want your opinions on this. Let me know. Is pretension good for us? I think it is. I think it, it makes us think more deeply. Uh, and that is not to say that we shouldn't have any of these kind of artful games and uh, have it being vague. I think Rebirth is has a very pretentious plot. I think it thinks of itself a lot when you're playing the game. It thinks a lot of itself. It reminds you how serious everything is. But also, in that same vein, actually kind of juggles it very well it, with the comedy of its writing, how well the writing is. Uh, how it can go from one scene where it's pretty jovial and, and, and joking, and then it goes straight into another scene where uh, something very serious has happened to one of the main characters. I think that's actually a very good uh, kind of juggling of both of those things. How do you become not too pretentious, but also how do you remind you, hey, you know, we are still a video game, though. We are going to remind you that this is supposed to kind of be a fun, a fun thing, right? A little different. Sorry for the quick cut, but I take care of something. Anyways, we were talking about pretension, and we were discussing what does it mean to really even be a video game right in 2024, and that's something I feel like is a problem, right? Because you see these AAA major titles coming out more and more, increasing budgets, increasing pretty much in every avenue, headcount, which leads to, of course, needing more profits, etc. right? Hopefully, too, good example of that. Needing more money to then pour into it, and you're chasing all these things. That's why we're probably seeing all these layoffs, because it's bloated to the point where everyone's having to pretty much revitalize or, I guess, reorganize uh, what they're going to be looking like heading forward. And... Although I think we will come out of it better, in the short term, it does seem very, very scary, right? You're seeing entire studios either disappear or just get to the point where they're, it's, it's not really recognizable with how many people they've lost. And I mean, you go to that Kotaka Harko that's being updated, right? How many layouts we've had just in this here alone. And we're almost halfway through and... It's not the end, unfortunately. I wonder what, if there will be some sort of boom again. Maybe returning to a simpler way of making games. Maybe uh, it's maybe that's too reductive and we're just too human to take something so artful and put so many 
keep you so held up so it there is no way to go back and really just have to push forward and figure something else out and of course ai is coming up that could change the industry drastically or maybe it won't who knows it doesn't really seem like anyone really knows because uh, you see the people very bullish on AI, but they don't understand what the limitations it can have. But we are, of course, a couple years away from something even crazier happening. But anyways, I think this was a good talk. We kind of sat down, discussed the in-depth nature of what's going on over at xbox what look what the gaming landscape's looking like i'm very curious if they're gonna be able to pull something out of this maybe they'll sit down and say hey we need to revise our plan but it seems like they need to really just push forward they don't want to probably change anything if if they change now it's gonna be pretty disastrous maybe my opinion, they just need to be clear about things right now. Everything's not clear. They're touting how well everything's selling on PlayStation, which of course it is, because there's a culture of buying on there instead of the culture that we have over on Xbox, where you kind of just get Game Pass, and then that already limited number of Xbox consoles made the actual buying of games, of course, less fruitful there for people who are thinking big <laughs> anyways this is a good chill conversation i wanted something quick something nebulous not really a set topic i just wanted to sit down and discuss things things with you and i want to thank everyone for stopping by today of course stick with me here at the easy series game podcast you can uh, like comment subscribe share with a friend if you'd like uh but I just appreciate the time you spent here. Um, of course, just gifting me with 20 to 30 minutes of your time is plenty for me. So everything else is just at the extra mile if you want to go for it. But um, I want to thank everyone. I actually have a couple other things on my mind. So I might start a little maybe mini series of these uh, and go back to the regular show every week and kind of keep them side by side. Uh, so I have this outlet to be a little more spontaneous and then. I, of course, have the news to then kind of guide me to more thorough con uh, conversations. But until the next time, I have been Elijah, and I thank you for tuning in, and until next time, go Chief.